Okay, so how is everyone today? Great. 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 Uh, let's see, today's the 19th. So any questions before we get to work? Yes? Yeah, the, there there will be, but I just got hung up on Wednesday, so I'll post those today. Yeah, sorry for that. Uh, other questions? Okay, so uh, well, let's recall uh, one thing from last time. Uh, so so slightly surprising item from last time is that what is the square root of x squared? <coughs> Absolute value of x. So the slightly surprising thing is that uh, it's not x. Right? It's absolute value of x. OK. So uh, in particular, uh, to remind you of the definition of this word, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I said it last time, uh, parity. <coughs> So let, let n be in the whole numbers. Then you say n is even. That's what you, you say. That's what it's called when uh, n is divisible by 2. And then you say n is odd otherwise. And to use this new word, parity, in a sentence, uh, I could say the parity, parity of 1, 3, 1, 4 is blank. Is what? Even. Whereas, for example, the parity of 17 is odd. OK. Uh, as a result, <coughs> we have the following uh, definition. Uh, let n be in the naturals. more than one. Okay, then the following are equivalent. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to say the following are equivalent so many times this semester that I'm going to just start making this initialism, TFAE. The following are equivalent. <coughs> uh, fine. So the first one is that y to exponent n is x and n is even, and y is greater or equal to 0. And 2, that is equivalent to y is the nth root of x. OK. And a second TFAE. The second TFAE is 3, that y to exponent n is x, and n is odd. Then that is equivalent to 4 y is the nth root of x. OK, now these two pairs almost look the same, right? They almost look the same. Uh, but we have to split them out to even cases and odd cases. So notably, what 
uh, one and three are analogous to each other, but what is three missing when compared to one? Right, the, greater, the y greater than or equal to zero bit. So as a result, as a result, is that in, in the case that n is even, the inputs and outputs must be greater than or equal to zero. When, it, when n is even. <clears throat> and when n is odd, the inputs and outputs can have any sign. And then just some other uh, other notes is that when you write square root x, <laughs> notice that there's no n. I, I, we didn't write anything right there. Then that is understood to mean what? Uh, well, it, it, it's square root of x, but it's understood to be what n? 2, right? So there's a 2 here. So the square root in history was the first one ever considered, right? It, it was just written this way. And then, you know, eventually it came to pass that, oh, it might be interested in if we were doing it with threes instead. Uh, but at any rate, that's what those are. And this one is so important. Uh, it has its own special name, square root. And then another one that is important enough to have a special name is this one. And what is this one called? Cube root. OK. Any questions about this first page? So the definition of radicals uh, depends on the parity of the radical. Right? There's an even case and an odd case. Uh, <clears throat> fine. So, for example, I could ask, well, how about, what's the square root of 100? 10, right? Not a trick question. Is it plus or minus 10? Just 10, right? Uh, how about, what's the square root of negative 100? This is undefined. Why is it undefined? No real number such that, very good, such that when it's squared, you get negative 100. OK. How about, uh, fine, what's the cube root of 8? It's 2. Because after all, 2 times 2 times 2 three twos all in a row, that's eight. So the cube root of eight is two. How about the cube root of negative eight? Negative two, right? Now, wait a second. A negative inside of a radical, I'm feeling anxious, right? That doesn't sound good. Is it okay? Can you put a negative in, inside of a radical? Yeah, under what circumstance? When, when the parity of the radical is odd. What's the parity of this radical? Odd, because it's radical three. So a negative input is OK. Because uh, three is odd. Okay, so then what, what is the cube root of negative 8 then? 
negative 2. Because imagine if we had three copies of negative 2 and we're going to multiply them all together. Negative 2 times negative 2 is what? Positive 4. And then multiplied by one more negative 2 is negative 8. Good. Any question about this? OK. Uh, fine. So I could say uh, simplify by factoring out as much as possible. So how about uh, the cube root of 128? OK. So 128 is sort of a special number. It's a number that you should, you should uh, know its factorization by heart. Because it's a power of 2, right? So then 2, and then if you, multi if you multiply 2 by 2, you get 4. And if you multiply that by 2, you get 8, and then 16, and then 32, and then 64, and then 128. So, so the powers of 2, you should know them at least this far, probably all the way up to 1,024. It would be quite useful to you to, for, for that to be the case. Uh, so this, right, is 2 to exponent 1. This is 2 to exponent 2. This is 2 to exponent 3. 2 to exponent 4. 2 to exponent 5. 2 to exponent 6. And this one is 2 to exponent 7. So this is, these are things that you should just know and love. Uh, as a result, as a result, we can write, we can factor 128 in the following way. We can say that it's 2 multiplied by 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 2. There's seven of them. OK. So now the question is, is can we get anything to come out of the radical? OK, so not exactly pairs of 2. You might mean the right thing, but you didn't say the right thing. Yeah, triplets need to come out, right? Groups of size 3 need to come out. So can we make any triplets? Yeah, right, I see here's a triplet. A triplet of twos. Why are we interested in triplets? I thought we were interested in twins. It's cube root. Why, why were we interested in twins the last time we were dealing with this? Because it was square roots. Now we're interested in triplets. So this triplet of twos comes out as what? as just a single 2. Because you can think of cube root as a machine where you put in a triplet and out comes a singlet. Right? It collapses it down to just one of them. OK, so then this would be 2 and then multiplied by cube root of, well, how many 2's are left in there? Four of them. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Are we able to get out another triplet? Ah, even another triplet can come out, right? So that comes out as a 2. <clears throat> so that would be 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by cube root of how much 2 is left in there? Just a single one, right? And then, of course, 2 times 2 is 4. So you could write this as... 4 multiply by cube root 2. Any question about it? This is OK. All right. Another one slightly more complicated, but not really. 
Uh, how about same instructions as before? So same as above, but now uh, the sixth root of, um, say, uh, 8 to exponent 15 multiplied by 2 and to exponent uh, 10 multiplied by 3 to exponent, uh, I don't know, 38. So I went ahead and factored it for you because otherwise this number would just be enormous, right? It, it, it would be like as wide as the page. Uh, maybe, maybe much wider, actually, uh, but it doesn't matter. So, so uh, what, what group size comes out of the radical now? Things of size, the group, groups of size 6, right? So do we have enough eighths to come out? Yes. Uh, so what I want you to observe is that we could do it in the following way. We could say, well, uh, that 8, that's 15 eighths, 15 copies of 8, all in product. So I'm going to say that, well, first it's 6 of those 8s, and then it's another 6 of those 8s. So altogether, how many 8s have I accounted for so far? 12 of them so far. And then there's 3 more. So do you observe that, what would this come out as? Just an H. Just an H. That comes out as an 8. And do you also observe that this would also come out as an 8? So sixth root is like a machine where you put in a sextuplet and out comes a singlet. So, so two, uh, two eighths come out. So it would be uh, 8 times 8. Okay, then 6th root of, well, there were 3 eighths that had to stay inside. Uh, and then 2 to exponent 10. And then uh, 3 to exponent 38. So any question about that first step? Okay. Uh, so can we get any more 8s to come out? Nope, not enough eights. Uh, how about twos? Yeah, there's enough twos. Uh, so we could take, so there's ten twos altogether in product. Uh, we can take them out six at a time. So we could get a single two to come out. So eight multiplied by eight multiplied by two multiplied by six. Uh, sixth root, that is. Uh, eight to exponent three multiplied by how much two is in here now? four of them, right? And then 3 to exponent 38. Now there's not enough twos. So we're done with the eights and we're done with the twos. Uh, are there enough threes? Yes. Yeah. How many groups of size six can we get to come out? Six. Six groups of six, because that'd be 36 of them. And how much, how many of them would remain inside? Two. Two of them. Right. So then it would look like 8 multiplied by 8 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3 to exponent uh, 6 because that's how many of them we were able to come get out and then multiplied by 8 to exponent 3 times 2 to exponent 4 times 3 to exponent 2. Beautiful. Any question about it? Yes? I'm never going to ask a question like this. The only purpose of, of us doing this is just for illustration. The next, the, next kind of question, the next thing we do is the kind of question that I'm going to ask. But if I did ask a question like this, I'd, I'd make it clear. Like, uh, well, in the end, I'm just not going to ask a question like this. Other questions? Okay, so now, uh, remark. Uh, what am I trying to
trying to say. Yeah, this uh, remark. So the very first thing we said today is that the square root of x squared is what? Absolute value of x. Uh, but we also mentioned today that when you write radical and you don't write the radical number, then the radical number is understood to be what? Two, right? So what I want you to see is that when it looks like that, you get absolute value of x. Okay, what if we change those twos to threes? What if we make it the cube root of x cubed? Then what? Then what's the answer? Well, let's see if we can figure it out. So how about, um, how about the following? How about cube root of negative 2 cubed? Well, what is negative 2 cubed? Negative it's negative 8. So this would be the cube root of negative 8. And what's the cube root of negative 8? Negative 2. Because, after all, if you make three copies of negative 2 and multiply them all together, well, the first two multiplied to become positive 4, and then multiplied by the last one, that's negative 8. So have a look. Did we need absolute value? Yeah, this one is just x. This one is absolute value of x. That one is just x. Huh. Okay, so what's the general rule? What is the nth root of x to n? Some of the time it's going to be like square root. And some of the time it's going to be like cube root. Uh-huh. Then what? Very good. When n is even. Absolute value of x when n is even. So like 2 and 4 and uh, 44, things like that. And it's just x without the absolute value when n is odd. <coughs> OK. Okay, so then to get the point across, how about, um, well, how about the, uh, I don't know, fourth root of x to exponent, um, how about 6? And suppose it's the same instruction as before, is that we want to uh, we want to simplify by factoring out as much as possible now we've done we've done an exercise that is kind of like this but it had one more instruction one more bit to the instruction, and I'm going to I'm going to remark here what's not here. Okay, so uh, without assuming all variables positive, so that part in red, if you look at the previous exercises that we've done. The instruction was simplify by factoring out as much as possible, assuming all variables are positive. So now that's not part of it. You cannot make that assumption. Okay, so uh, fine. 
because uh, what is the what is the group size that gets smuggled out? Groups of size four, right? Qu quadruplets. Do we have enough? Uh, do we have enough X's to come out? Yeah. So so in particular, uh, there's six of them here. We just need four. So we can we can get uh, X to four to come out. And what does it come out as? Not X. As the absolute value of X. Why? Well, that's true, but there's a but there's a different reason. Right, because four is even. So when you make the simplification, uh, this becomes uh, absolute value of x, and then multiplied by the fourth root of how much? How many x's have to stay inside? Two, right? So x squared. And now there's not enough x's for us to keep playing the game, right? So now we're done. Okay, so if I say that that was the first example, then how about the second example is we do, say, the fifth root of uh, w to exponent uh, 8. <coughs> So now what's the group size that comes out? Right. Groups of size five, quintuplets. Is there, are, are there enough w's for us to play the game? Yeah. So uh, in particular, it will be the case that w to exponent 5 comes out. And what does it come out as? Just regular old w. What happened to the absolute value? Ah, just w, because 5 is odd. OK. So that would be w multiplied by fifth root of how much w had to stay? 3, of course, because I put a w in this exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Any question uh, about this one? Okay. So one more, and we'll just do this one quickly. Uh, so same as above, same instructions as above. Mm, how about how about the fourth root of sixty-four multiplied by x to exponent. 11 multiplied by y to exponent 5. So what's the group size? 4, right? Group of size 4. Uh, how, does, how does 64 factor? You have to figure out what its exponent is. Right? One more. Six. Two to exponent six. Right? That's what 64 is. So are there enough twos to play? Can I ask you a question? Yeah. It is. I don't dispute that. No, uh, because because uh, well, so l let me write it down. So fourth root of I agree entirely that sixty four can be written as four multiplied by four multiplied by four. No dispute. Come out in groups of four or more. 
in groups of size four. It, it is sort of confusing that these are equal to four, but that's not relevant. The thing that's relevant is that we need four of them. So we only have three of them when you do it this way. Uh, when you do it with twos, then y you've got six of them. So two times two times two times two times two times two. Six of them times x to exponent 11 times y to exponent 5. So when you look at it in this way, we've got uh, six twos. Can we get a group of size 4 to come out? Yeah. Right. We can take these quadruplets, this quadruplet of twos, and that can come out as what? As just a 2, a single 2. And then how much 2 is left in there? Two of them, right? So 2 times 2. Okay. Do we have enough x's to play? Yeah, we do, right? Because we, we take them out in groups of size 4, and there's 11 of them. So... So 2 multiplied by 4 square root, and then 2 to exponent 2. And now, this is 11 x's, so I'm going to write it in the following way. I'm going to say that, well, first it's 4 x's, and then it's 4 more x's, so altogether that's 8 x's so far, and then there's 3 more of them. So there's 11, so that means there's 4, and then 4 more, and then 3 more. So now this x to exponent 4 can come out, and it comes out as what? No. It, com it comes out as an absolute value of x. Okay, so it comes out as an absolute value of x. Why? because this is an even radical. So we get 2 multiplied by absolute value of x multiplied by fourth root of 2 squared and then we still have that x to 4, and we still have that x to 3, and we still have that y to exponent 5. Ah, we have another group of x's that can be smuggled out, right? We have an embarrassment of riches in, in x's. So, so these can come out. What do these come out as? As absolute value of x, again, for the same reason. So another absolute value of x comes out. So we have 2 multiplied by absolute value of x, multiplied by absolute value of x, multiplied by the fourth root of 2 to exponent 2. Now we just have three of those x's left. So can any more x's come out? None. Yes? Um, those two, uh, absolute values, uh huh? Um, could you combine them to be x squared? It doesn't matter if they're positive or negative. Okay, so they let's. I agree. Let's consider that. So now, out here, we have a pair of, x, uh, pair of absolute value of x's, right? So that, that uh, we could write it as the following. We could say that that's 2 multiplied by absolute value of x, and we're squaring that, and then multiplied by the fourth root of 2 squared times x cubed times y to exponent 5. And the question on offer is that, is it the case that the absolute value of x squared 
is equal to x squared. So that's a question. So is that true? Yes. It is true, right? Because imagine, what if x were 9? Well, then you'd first compute the absolute value of 9, which is, is, is 9. <laughs> and then you square that and get 81. OK, well, suppose that x is negative 9. You first compute the absolute value of that and get 9. And then you square that and get 81. And if we ignore the absolute value, well, what if you square negative 9? Not negative 81. So if in parentheses you square negative 9, you still get 81. So, so yes, this is true. OK, so as a result, we could say that that's equal to 2 multiplied by x squared <coughs> multiplied by the fourth root of 2 squared times x cubed times y to exponent 5. So can we play the game anymore? Ah, with y to 5, right? So uh, w what is the group size one more time? 4. So we could take out a group of size 4 y's, and they'd come out as what? As absolute value y. So that'd be 2 multiplied by x squared multiplied by absolute value of y, multiplied by fourth root of 2 squared times x cubed times how much y? Just 1, right? Can we do something about the absolute values for these y's? No, we can't. OK, it's just not happening. So this is the answer. Lovely, isn't it? Any questions about it? Yes? Oh, I don't care. doesn't matter. 4. Yeah, you, you, 2 squared would be fine. 4 would be fine. Either one. Other questions? OK. So how about the following? So the following are equivalent. One, that y is the nth root of x. So that statement is equivalent to this statement. That y is x to exponent 1 over n. And I'll note that because uh, the statement in item 1 depends on the parity of n, so does, uh, so does 2. So by way of example, I could ask, well, uh, this, this tells us how to use the calculator okay, to do something like, uh, say, the um, sixth root of 64. OK. Well, the sixth root of 64, according to item 2, according to item 2, could be rewritten in what different way? Right. It could be rewritten as 64 to exponent 1 over 6. And then, uh, when you write a dot, like 3 dot x, that means multiplication. but very often, uh, the instructor won't even write the dot. They'll just write 3x, which, which still means 3 multiplied by x. The dot is being omitted. So there's something being omitted uh, here. What, what, what symbol is being omitted? 
caret, right? So to write this with a caret, uh, this is 64 and then caret, and you have to write this in parentheses, 1 divide 6. You have to write it in parentheses because uh, what's the order of operations? P and then E, and then MD are, on, are resolved left to right, and then AS are resolved left to right. So what kind of thing is a caret? Exponent. It's an exponent. So if you didn't write the parentheses around the 1 over 6, then you'd have to do 64 exponentiated to exponent 1, and then all of that divided by 6, right? So you have to do it this way. And this is how you get your calculator to do it. So on your on calculator here, uh, you could write 64 exponent 1 divide 6. So you can type it in that way. And it tells you 2. Terrific. <clears throat> OK. Next. Let M and N be N, the naturals, uh, and let them have no common factors. So what I mean is, for example, it would be fine to use, say, 10 and, uh, 10 and 13. That would be fine. Because 10 and 13 are both natural and they don't have any common factors. But 10 and 15 is not fine. Why not? Five is, five is a common factor. OK. In such a case, the following are equivalent. One. that y is equal to the nth root of x, and then you take all of that and raise it to exponent m. Two, because of the remark immediately above, instead of writing this uh, as nth radical, we could also write it in this way. We could say blah, blah, blah. M, and then I could write an X here. And how do I write this thing without a radical? One, two, one, over. one over N. N. Right. So these are things that are, neither one of these is new. These are both things you already knew. Uh, and then here's the new one. Equal to Y equal to X to M over N. So this is the new one. That's my alarm that the quiz is about to happen. OK, so we just have time to do one of these, and then we'll have the quiz. So for example, uh, evaluate without a calculator. Uh, how about 8? And then we'll raise this to exponent 5 over 3. Eight raised to exponent five over three. Okay. Well, according to two above, notice that that presently it's like three. It's it's something to exponent m over n, and notice that five and three have no common factors. They have no common factors. So if we use if we use two immediately above. Then how can we rewrite this? Eight to, one eight to one over three, and then that to exponent five. Well, what is eight to exponent one third? That's cube root of eight. And what is cube root of eight? It's two. So this would be two to exponent five. And then, well, what is two to exponent five? Thirty-two. Terrific. And that's what we'll pick it up on Monday. So please put, put away your things, and we'll have a quiz.